So we have disassembled the buckle. We have our template and we're ready to transfer everything. And we're just gonna take advantage of this over Sharpie to do what we need to do. So these are great. Uh, if you're working with dark fabrics and you want a silver sharpie, uh, that's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, if you've got black with a black sharpie, it's a little cumbersome to figure out. So now we've transferred our holes. You can see what we've got there. Now all we have to do is take our scissors and just round out the corners here. And I find it's good to do it in one continuous pass. You'll get a cleaner cut. And leave a little extra just in case you don't feel like you were right where you wanted to be the first try. Okay. Now we're going to cut our slot. Just lining up with that silver sharpie again, making sure we're on center. And then Again, following that line. Got a nice clean slot. And then we're going to punch our holes, making sure that our punch is actually locked into place. And occasionally, my punch will have this little ratchet slip loose, manufacturer's defect. So off to get a screwdriver. lock it back in place and then just seat it it's a piece of hardened spring steel but uh, I think when they round this little edge here they weren't close enough to the spring steel or the spring steel wasn't cut long enough so it tends to slip so now I've got to make sure before we get too ambitious that our rivet will fit into the right punch just want to guess willy-nilly so that looks like the right size we could also get away with that one we're gonna go a little bit bigger okay so back to punching we're gonna line up our holes like so <laughs> and again like so side as well like so and then we're going to make sure that we can just poke those little plugs out with the rivet itself which we can good just going to put our posts through the bottom side and then slide the tongue of our belt buckle in like so. and we cannot forget the keeper so where does the keeper go does the keeper go on this side does the keeper go on the other side it goes on the other side so if you already assembled it you can always feed it on through the tail just make sure your keeper is facing out correctly so if your keeper has a little joint here where the fabrication is usually that gets hidden so you want to have the smooth side on the outside before you feed it all the way along the tail up to your buckle you could conversely disassemble the whole buckle and come back but there are multiple ways to do this so it's always good to know both and that's what we're doing now so um, if you feel the leather is too stiff here you can always skive it thinner. Generally, that's something you'll do uh, at the very beginning. But I'm satisfied with the stiffness of the belt at this location. So, we're going to put our little rivets on. Snap that into place. Like so. And again with the other side. Now, you go to rivet these and they'll pop off. That's okay. Just know that uh, 
once you've riveted the first one, if the other cap pops off, you're just going to snap it back on. But I always try to keep everything lined up, just in case there's something that I've missed. Alright, so, seat that on the anvil. Come here, anvil. Cup side goes down. That's a good seated rivet, and the other cap is still in place. Line that up. There we go. So now that the belt buckle is assembled, uh, we've taped on some of this lovely one inch measuring tape to figure out how much belt needs to be worn. And this silver dot demarks where the tongue actually meets in the buckle assembly. So that tells me I'm at approximately, let's see, 12 plus 12 plus 10, uh, 34 inch waist, plus or minus a couple of inches for just general use. So most of all of this leather can be removed. But the first thing we're gonna do is take that one inch section and sort of demark where we would want to put our holes. So the nice part about this one inch tape is you can make sure all your holes are aligned, but it only really works if you take the time to center up your tape, okay? And it was wandering about quite a bit. So we wanna take the time and line up the center of our tape with the center of our belt. And so, um, this works really well if you have contrasting colors, yellow and blue, actually quite lovely to work with. Um, but, you know, if you're working with anything but blue, it seems like blue tape would be acceptable. So generally the rule is I will punch the hole for my center, my comfortable wearable center, and then I'll demark one inch before and after and maybe a little more. When you're doing that, you want to use an elliptical punch because the tongue itself, right, when this little post goes through, although it goes through as a circle, it does in fact lay over and that circle goes from a round shape to an elliptical shape. So we will start by punching an ellipse at the 10. Then we'll do one at the nine as well. And we'll do one at the 11. And this just allows you to have a variance in belt size. So let's say you eat a big meal or you lose a lot of weight. Um, it gives you some options. So you punch your holes, and then once you've got your holes punched, you've got your one inch layout, you can put the whole thing on and then check to see how it fits. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so yep, the silver mark was the perfect fit, and we went one inch over uh, for a little extra room in case, I don't know, big dinner. So the general rule is at your last hole, you still want to have enough leather to fit through your keeper. So you wouldn't want to cut this strip any shorter than this demarcation. So if you want to give yourself another inch for a hole or decide to extend the belt, that gives you a little bit more flexibility. So what we're going to do is we're just going to trim this at the two and a half mark here. And we're just doing a straight trim right now so we can do the shaping. And there's a couple of ways to shape it, but let's just get rid of all that excess leather. And now we have our tape clear, like so. And we no longer need it for spacing. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Mm -hmm. And then slide the belt out. So, for the belt strip, there's a couple of ways to do it. Most commonly is just to draw a point and then cut it. And there's also chisels that do that. So 
I make a chisel that's a little bit bigger than this, and that will work. Um, or you can start out with this tapered point chisel and then go manually shape the rest of it. Um, that's just, you know, one steady blow with the hammer. What I like to do is line it up and just mark out where I want my gothic point to start. And then from there, I grab my scissors. And that allows you to cut a fairly nice radius. And you're doing this by eye. But the chisel is really good to just set, you know, where your center is going to be and give you an idea of where that arc is. And really the tricky part is when you're diving off the edge, you want to have a guide so that you can come to a reasonable point. Like so. And once you've done that, everything in your belt is complete. Beyond any decorative finials you want to add, aside from, you know, the buckle, the keeper, and the rivets themselves. So if you want to add studs or anything else, you could. But there it is.